Well, welcome again, everybody. Uh, this is session 10 of our Life School, Forerunner School class called uh, Building an Eternal Purpose House of Prayer. Uh, and this is the final session, uh, Building an Eternal Purpose House of Prayer. The building it is uh, actually the title of the class as well, but I'm going to focus on, uh, on um, those things that we need to do if you want to be a prayer leader, if you want to actually start a house of prayer or start a prayer ministry focused on God's eternal purpose. Some, just some keys that we've learned over the years of doing this. I maybe even start out with a, uh, a testimony how important it is to do some of the things that we'll be sharing in this session. Uh, it, um, because, you know, we've been on this journey now for, I think, six years, and uh, we are, uh, I think, I feel like we're just really beginning to, to really um, understand it and to be able to really pray effectively into God's uh, eternal purpose. And we were on, we've been on a journey, uh, and so we learned some things along the ways. Um, and, uh, you know, even going back to 2015, when uh, the angelic being came into our church that uh, time, that Saturday morning when Terry Bennett and Josiah Bennett were ministering at our church and uh, we were summoned to the golden altar. Uh, it was very exciting and very uh, solemn, very uh, serious day that day, and I've shared some of this in the class before. But yet when we, you know, when all the excitement settled down and Terry and Josiah went home and I was left with the church. Um, it, it, there was a lot of questions there. What was, what did that mean? Can I, do I have to change every way that I prayed before in all my life? Uh, can I not pray for my family anymore? Can I not pray for the church anymore? What is all the, what does all this mean? There was a lot of confusion. Um, and to be honest, I didn't really know the answers to most of it. And so I was, it drove me to really seek the Lord as to what was involved. And then over the uh, months and, and even years, especially when, we, when God unveiled God's eternal purpose to us, that really gave us uh, kind of an objective. Well, this is what we're praying for. This is what the summons is all about. Uh, and that helped a lot. But there's been a journey there. And out of this journey, we've learned a lot. And I believe the Lord wants us to close this class with a, just some practical things on uh, how do we, uh, if we want to build a house of prayer, what are some of the things that we've learned that will help you where maybe, hopefully, you won't have to go through some of the pitfalls that we went through. So that's kind of the objective of this session is uh, especially for those who want to start a prayer ministry or if you're a pastor to lead your church into praying into God's eternal purpose. What are some things uh, that you need to understand and that maybe we can help you with? So anyway, I think I want to have a prayer to begin and then we'll, we'll jump right into to this session. Father, we thank you. Let's just pray. Father, we thank you for really everybody who's hung in here for these 10 sessions and we ask that you bless them and you raise them up as an eternal purpose house of prayer, eternal purpose prayer warrior, we pray. Whether they're one by themselves or whether they're a small group or whether they're a church or even a movement, a citywide movement, let it be, Lord. We welcome you, Holy Spirit, and we ask that you would take control right now in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Uh, so anyway, we're talking about some practical steps on if you want to start a prayer ministry. Now, again, I want to make sure you understand we're not talking about um, you don't have to be a pastor of a church to do that. Maybe you have two or three, four friends, a half dozen friends that you could gather once a week or once a month and begin to pray into these things. That would be, this would be helpful for you as, for that as well. You may be a pastor and I know we'll be taking this uh, class to Africa, uh, and it will be use it. We'll be training pastors there to begin eternal purpose prayer ministries in their churches, and 
so it, it could be any number of ways you, you might do this, but it, um, even if it's just principles for you, if you want to pray alone in your prayer closet into these things, these things could help. But just some things that we've learned over the years uh, to, that will hopefully help you there. Uh, one thing I want to say as we begin, we're, when we're talking about building an eternal purpose house of prayer, we are not speaking about necessarily having a physical structure, a physical building. You do not have to have a building dedicated to eternal purpose prayer in order to build an eternal purpose house of prayer. We're talking about building in the spirit. You know, we talked about that a good bit in the last session. It's a spiritual house comprised of living stones uh, where we minister a spiritual priest at a spiritual altar of incense. So, so we're not talking about a building. You know, if God blesses you with a building de totally dedicated to eternal purpose prayer, wonderful. We were all for that. But it doesn't have to be that. It, and for most of us, it won't be that. It will be just uh, a, a place you meet, uh, gathering people together, where the function or the ministry focus is on praying into God's eternal purpose. And so I want to just state that as we begin so we're clear on that. Um, in, in terms of building an eternal purpose house of prayer, a very important scripture is Luke chapter 5, starting with verse 36. It will require a totally new wineskin. Uh, to do this, and I, I, want to, I don't want to minimize this. Uh, so let me just read this scripture verse and talk about it a little bit. Uh, Jesus was, was telling them a parable, Luke chapter 5, verse starting with 36. Uh, and he said, No one tears a piece of cloth from a new garment and puts it on an old garment. Otherwise, he will both tear the new and the, the piece from the new will not match the old. And no one puts new wine into old wine skins. Otherwise, the new wine will burst the skins and it will be spilled out and the skins will be ruined. But the new wine must be put into fresh wine skins. And no one, after drinking the old wine, wishes for the new, for he says that the old is good enough. So let's, let's make a few points about this uh, scripture verse because I think it applies to, to building an eternal purpose house of uh, prayer ministry. One, it will require a whole new wineskin. You will not be able to just uh, pour the, the wine of eternal purpose prayer into an old wineskin. Uh, it will require a whole new focus for your prayers. The words you pray will be different. Uh, the themes will be different. The intent will be different. Uh, so many things. And, and it'll be it's going to be radically different than for what than what most believers and churches are praying right now. Very few churches are praying uh, into where there's where there's prayer time sessions set apart for God's eternal purpose. It's a whole new wineskin of prayer, and I'll tell you, just like I've mentioned in terms of our testimony. Uh, it's not going to be easy to turn those in your fellowship from the way they have prayed to uh, this new way of praying. It's a new way of doing it. And it leads us to a couple other points from this scripture verse. The old is not going to be good enough. People are going to say the old is good enough. They, they may not say it, but they will think it. The old way that I prayed is good enough. I don't have to learn about praying into new issues and new topics uh, you know, where most people pray for, you know, for just personal needs of themselves or from friends or other people in the fellowship. Uh, and they don't go in, they don't take it to that level, that higher level of praying for Christ to have his bride and for things related to that uh, at, the, at the global level. Those kind of prayers don't take place much uh, in the church. So it's going to be, the old is not going to be good enough. And then the third point about this is that you're not going to be able to patch this type of prayer uh, on to the old way that you're praying. Just that the, you pray the same way that you prayed for the last 30 years and you just add on to that 
uh, the, the point that I, now let's just pray a sentence prayer that, that Christ would have his bride made ready. You're, you can't just patch it under that. It's going to require a whole new wineskin, a whole new garment uh, of prayer. Uh, so get, if, you want, if you're going to be a leader, just accept that. Accept that point uh, that that's the way it's going uh, to be. Now, that does not mean, I, I've said this in other sessions, but it does not mean that you can't pray for the, the issues you've been praying for before. Obviously, you can and do. And in our church, we do. We, we pray. Uh, my wife and I pray every day. And we pray for our family. We pray for protection. We pray for individual needs in different situations. At our Sunday morning service, we many times we'll have prayer where we'll pray for healing and for various issues of ministry or breakthrough for people and all sorts of things there. We have home groups and we pray for individual needs in our home groups. So we pray for all those things, but we have prayer sessions that are set apart uh, to pray uh, totally into God's eternal purpose. Now, we need more. I, we, you know, we're not there. I don't want to come across like we have perfected all of this. We, I think we're just at the very beginning stage of really beginning to do this. Uh, and, but don't be discouraged if you think nobody in the, in the church that I know is even doing this. That's why you're a forerunner. That's why you're called as a forerunner, to be those who birth these kinds of things uh, in a new way uh, in, in terms of your prayer ministry and your prayer life. So anyway, it will require a totally new wineskin uh, to be able to pray this way. Um, and I want to, I've got two categories here. I've got things you need to do or we suggest you do. Before you begin uh, actual prayer sessions, if you're going to be the leader, uh, and then things that you would do actually once you begin the prayer session. So let's talk about before beginning a house of prayer, just some tips and some ideas on things that you uh, can do. It's going to be important to prepare uh, because if you just start it without preparing, you, you will start it, you quite possibly would will start it in a way that it's not going to be an eternal purpose house of prayer. It'll be just maybe slightly different or another way of doing the same thing you've been doing. So it's important to prepare. If you're going to be a prayer leader, it's important uh, to prepare uh, for these things. Um, so here, here's some tips. Here's some things that we recommend. Uh, one, gain understanding of God's eternal purpose and of the types of prayers that facilitate God's eternal purpose. That's a mouthful. But you get understanding of what God's eternal purpose is and the kind of prayer that helps facilitate or prays into the fulfillment of God's eternal purpose. You know, we've got a lot of classes in the Life School, Forerunner School. Uh, you know, the eternal blueprint gives, lays out God's eternal purpose. The Eternal Purpose Church is a, a, a class that we have that takes the eternal purpose and puts it into the setting of how to create a spiritual environment in your church that fulfills God's eternal purpose. Uh, understanding the forerunner call gives the idea of how forerunners fit into all of this. Uh, theology of the bride, understanding the end times, all of those are helpful classes to get uh, a lot of insight into uh, what some of the prayer topics and themes are. So, you know, there's a lot of materials there, uh, but uh, just some of the things that um, you, you, we would recommend is you get knowledge of the five aspects of God's eternal purpose. Remember, we talked about those in the eternal purpose class. We've talked about it in this class as well, those five themes of God's eternal purpose, that, and, and I've repeated them here in your notes, but that Christ is the center of God's thought and plan, and he's preeminent in all things. That's the first one. That God's eternal purpose is for the Father uh, to have a family of mature uh, sons for his eternal, as his eternal representatives throughout the eternal ages. 
That's the second one. For, uh, for Christ uh, to have a prepared bride to be the eternal wife of the Lamb and to partner with Christ forever. For the Holy Spirit to have a temple in which he can dwell in fullness. And for believers to have eternal rewards, to receive eternal rewards of eternal intimacy, eternal glory, and eternal authority. So get knowledge of all those things. Those are important because that's what you'll be praying into, those kind of things. And so it's important that first you know uh, about uh, uh, those things uh, as well so, so that you can pray with knowledge. It's very important to do that. Uh, in addition to that, get, gain knowledge of the four prayer themes presented in this class that flow from God's eternal purpose, like we talked about uh, the pray for the corporate man, the bride to be made ready, the father to have his son, the Holy Spirit to have his temple. Uh, all of those, th that's one of the themes of prayer, to pray into those kind of things. Pray into, uh, learn about the, the, the need to resist the great harlot and to restrain the spirit of Antichrist and to pray into Israel, what involves those issues. All of those are important prayer understand, things to understand so that you can guide the, the prayer meeting into the appropriate arenas, into the appropriate ways. So that, again, another aspect of having uh, understanding. Uh, a third issue is to, get, is to get understanding of some of the key issues that will conclude the church age. This is really important because this is the reason the go, bowls of incense are being fulfilled is to transition to initiate one of the reasons. I mean, there's other aspects to the end times, obviously, but one of the things is to fill these golden bowls of incense so that the transition will take place from the church age to the age to come. And so we need to understand some of these issues in the, in the end times. It'll be very helpful uh, to in terms of prayer. Now, I'm talking about big picture, and we don't need to know what the, the seventh trumpet is or the sixth trumpet or, or the, you know, we don't have to know the details of those kinds of things. That's helpful probably, but you don't have to do that. But we do need to understand that when the bride is made ready, that's when the Lord will return. We need to understand that when the man child comes forth in fullness, that will initiate the last three and a half years. Those kinds of issues uh, will be important in terms of kind of giving us insight into uh, how uh, to pray. Uh, another area is the understanding the theology of the bride, that, the, that not every, which is our belief, that not every born-again believer will be the eternal wife of the Lamb, but those who make themselves ready uh, to get that theology and that understanding because it gives you terminology and insight into how uh, to pray. Uh, give un get understanding of the, uh, um, uh, of the arising of overcoming sons, uh, how th that mature sons will be the eternal representatives of the Father. Uh, you know, there's so many issues like that. Now, when I say all that, I mean, I hope you're not feeling like, man, I'll never get understanding of all that. That's like 30 years of study to get to understanding of that. I, I, uh, in one sense, that's true. It will take a good bit of time to get understanding of those things. But in another sense, don't wait until uh, you get full understanding of all that to get started. Because you'll ne if you do, you'll never start. So there's a balance. There's a balance. There's a basic understanding of some of these things. But that will grow as you get more and more understanding as you go forth with these things. And so... Uh, don't wait until you have perfect knowledge or you'll never start. But yet at the same time, try to get some understanding because it's, this is what you'll be praying into and it's so important to have some insight into these things so that you can pray effectively with those things. Okay, so get knowledge yourself. If you're going to be the prayer leader, get a basic foundational knowledge of at least some of these things before you begin your group. That's uh, one point. The next point is teach some of these things, those who will participate in your prayer ministry, teach them the same topics. Teach them some of these topics because 
Otherwise, what will happen is you'll start it and you maybe will know some of these uh, things and you can pray, but the other people that, you, that come to your meeting, they will not have a clue what you're praying about and they'll just sit there be, and they, they won't voice a prayer and the meeting will not flow very well. So it's important that you not only have insight into these things, but that you teach these. Uh, and, and there's, you know, you'll, there's all kinds of ways that you could learn how to teach them. Uh, whether, you know, if you're a pastor, you could teach them in your church, uh, uh, either on Sunday mornings or some other time you could teach them. Uh, if not, you could come, you, you could do it in different ways, but you, there's an, the people that are, that come to your meeting need to have a basic understanding. We've seen this a lot in our church that, and it's getting better. It's really getting a lot better, but for a while there, some of the key leaders had understanding, a measure of understanding, but hardly anybody else in our church had any understanding. And so what happened then? No, nobody knew what to pray. And when they didn't want to pray or they didn't care, they had no insight into it. And so very important that we uh, train and teach uh, the people that that will be part of this group uh, some of these same concepts. Um, a uh, next point that's good, for, to, again, we're talking about preparing before we start teaching the sessions or we start, before we start praying, I'm, excuse me, before we start praying. Uh, in addition to learning and teaching the topics and themes involved in an eternal purpose house of prayer, we should understand and explain the importance of praying into God's eternal purpose. This is really important too. Um, you know, in, in this class, we, we listed uh, four things, big picture things that have to transpire before the Lord returns. The bride has to make herself ready. The corporate man-child of Revelation 12 much, must emerge in the earth in fullness. The gospel of the kingdom has to be preached throughout the earth. And, and then the fourth one is the golden incense bowls at the heavenly golden altar must be filled with the prayers of the saints. So, it's important that people know that, that one of the things that God is waiting on that's important in the end times to transition to fulfill the purpose of the church age is to fill the incense bowls with the prayers of the saints. So it gives them a reason why we're praying these things. You know, one is so that Christ can have his inheritance uh, as a bride and, and the father is for the sons, etc. But the other is that the church age is not going to end and these bowls of incense are filled. Now, how that all works, I don't know, but there's, a, there's an importance to this that needs to be communicated to the people so that they will uh, recognize the importance of what they're doing and be, uh, you know, will fill them with faith and desire uh, to do that. So that's another uh, important thing uh, to, to do there. Now, along those same lines, take seriously this summons to the golden altar. Um, here's what I believe. You're in this class because you feel like you're called as a forerunner in some form or fashion. It, I believe that every forerunner has been summoned to the golden altar that everyone, every, every forerunner has been summoned to the golden altar and that if you're going to be a forerunner, you're going to have to learn and participate in some way in eternal purpose prayer to pray for Christ to have his bride. Forerunners, forerunners must be intercessors. Uh, so you've been summoned to the golden altar. Now, you probably will not have an angelic being coming into your meeting and, and speak a summons to you to go to, to the golden altar. That probably will not happen. I, I believe one of the reasons why it happened to us is because uh, God has called us not only to be forerunners, but to birth forerunners. And so he gave us a dramatic encounter and so, of sorts as to summons us to the golden altar. But at the same time, I believe you... Uh, 
as a forerunner are also summoned just as much as we are. You are summoned to the golden altar. And, and so you didn't have to have an angel to come in to tell you that. It's because you are a forerunner that you are summoned to the golden altar. Uh, so you need to accept that. You need to believe that. You need to understand that. And you, and you need, because that will give you a determination and a, a, just a sense of, of feeling like a knowing that, I, you know, I'm called to this and I can't get away from it. I can't just not do it because God has summoned me to do this. I mean, that's the way I feel about it. Uh, it would be a lot easier not to fool with it, honestly, because you're trying to, to build in a lot of people a new wineskin that doesn't have any real immediate blessing to them. You know, when we bless, when we pray for a new job for our self or something, you know, if we get the new job, uh, we're blessed by it. But this produces no real tangible blessing for us. It's for Christ and for God, the Godhead to have that. So, you know, in a lot of ways, there's not an immediate benefit to this. So we need to realize we've been summoned this way and that God desires it, and it's a blessing, and we want to be pleasing unto God. Uh, and so take seriously uh, this summons. It's very important. So those are some of the points before you start. And again, if you think I've got to get perfect in all this, you'll never start. So I'm not saying that at all. But, you know, if you're going to, if, if you don't have any, insight into any of this take you know a few months or whatever and study some of these things and get a basic understanding of it before you start uh, uh, organizing a group so that when you start the group you can start on the right foot and that you can get started doing it uh, the right way and it'll evolve uh, as the years go by for sure uh, but you'll be starting in a way that will be helpful uh, as well so anyway that's before you get started now secondly let's um, Talk about actually leading uh, a group. Uh, this is once you start the meeting uh, to, um, to, to begin to lead the group. Um, I made this point on page seven in your notes. Don't wait until you have full understanding, which we've talked about several times. But uh, again, don't wait till you have full understanding um, to do that. Okay. Uh, number two in, on page seven Begin a group focused on prayer into God's uh, eternal purpose. Here's the point of this. Set up a, a if you're going to be leading a prayer session. Now, if you're a pastor and you have multiple different prayer sessions, not every session has to be focused on God's eternal purpose. But if you're going to start a group that is going to pray into God's eternal purpose, start that group with that objective, not uh, we're going to have a general group, we're going to pray for Aunt, Sally, Aunt Sally's uh, ingrown toenail, and then we'll add on playing for the bride to be made ready. Now, not, not that. We pray, set up the group uh, or session. This is what we're going to be praying into. This is the purpose of this prayer group, is to pray into these things. Now, what we do, uh, this is what we do, we, we have uh, one group that does this, our church does this on a periodic basis, and then we're starting in, in, the, in as the year goes, start, next year comes around, we're going to start other groups. But the, the purpose of that group is to pray into God's eternal purpose. Now, but there are, you know, as people gather, they, people may have needs. There may be somebody with a real urgent need. And so at the end, we always allow, or most times, allow for people to pray in, for praying into various individual needs. But we don't allow it at the beginning, normally. We don't allow it at the beginning. We push it to the end so that the focus of the group is on praying into God's eternal purpose. So that's the, the point. Begin the group focused on praying into God's eternal purpose. Now, as you, as you pray, this has been helpful for us. Pray for protection. Very important. You pray for protection because 
especially, you know, you might get into warfare issues as you begin to get into resisting the great harlot or restraining the spirit of Antichrist. Any of these things can stir up warfare. So you want to pray for protection, praying for the blood of Jesus to cover us, angels to guard us, the full armor of God to be upon us, the fire of God to, God, to, to be a wall of fire around us. All these things, pray for protection uh, then also pray for direction because as we talked about with this session on Holy Spirit-led prayer, in this whole topic of eternal purpose, there are thousands of different issues you can pray for and you gather for uh, an hour or two or whatever the length is, you may not be able to cover hardly any of that. So you ask, pray for God to direct you as to how to pray and then the third aspect of this is pray for the burden of the Lord. <clears throat> pray that God will give you the burden of what's on his heart for that particular session. Uh, individually and collectively, pray that, Lord, just uh, give us your burden for tonight. You know, Whatever your, is on your heart for tonight. You would be amazed at how powerful that one little prayer is. Yeah, God will do that. He'll faithfully give you a burden that maybe something you hadn't even thought about uh, praying into. But as you begin, make sure you do that to, to, for safety, to pray for protection, to pray that God would lead you and the burden that he would give you for that. Um, number, uh, the next one on page nine, keep the prayer focused on God's eternal purpose. This is really important as well. Uh, you know, what will happen a lot of times is, you know, you'll be praying, well, tonight we're going to pray for the bride to be made ready. You know, that's the, the theme that the Lord's maybe given you ahead of time that you want to pray into that. And, you know, you'll maybe pray, four or five people will pray into it, and then somebody will come up and say, you know, I had a dream the other night, and it would go and they spend 10 minutes going through the details of the dream, uh, and then either not pray at all or pray something totally set apart from the theme. Uh, so do your best without offending anybody. Try not to offend. But do your best to keep the prayer focused on God's eternal purpose. Uh, you know, as a prayer leader, what we try to do is say, look, let's pray right now into this particular topic. And then we pray into that. And then maybe now let's move, we, we finish that, and we say, now let's move to pray into this topic, all around, all different aspects of God's eternal purpose. And doing that, you kind of keep it focused on, uh, on the God's eternal purpose. Try to, try to do that uh, and keep it from people from getting into things that are totally apart from that. Uh, the next point, lay down your personal needs and self-interest in order to pray for God's purpose. You know, this is one thing that I've seen, you know, there's a passage of scripture, Matthew 6, starting with about verse 25 through 33, 34. But basically, seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. Um, you know, what we have found is if the more we pray for God's purposes, the more he'll just bless us with the things that we need. He knows our needs. Now, that doesn't mean we can't ever pray for him. We do. But when we're having an eternal purpose house of prayer, pray, lay down your own personal uh, needs and personal self-interest for, for that time period and focus on God's uh, answers, on God's needs and prayers. And you'll see that he'll answer uh, those, those prayers. Uh, the next one, pray with fervency and determination. Uh, this is uh, really, uh, really important about praying, you know, with a real fervency uh, and determination to see answers, not just uh, going through the motions type of prayer. Uh, when, when Terry Bennett was at our church and the, the summons came forth, here are some of the quotes that came forth around uh, his call summonsing us to the golden altar. He said, the hope for this nation uh, is represented by a people who are an exact representation of the Lord. We must fight it out by getting on our knees 
and taking hold of the horns of the golden altar and staying there until there is a swaying in the heavens. Here's another quote. Taking hold of the horns of the altar in the context of prayer has come to define prayer that is fervent for God's answers in response to the prayer. It involves a determination to stay at the place of prayer until God moves in the situation. Here are some other quotes and the themes that he drew from. The praying that is needed in this hour is not self-centered or needs-based prayers. Praying for our own needs is not going to help us. God has already promised to take care of our needs. Another point. God would mobilize an army who, who would know how to get hold of God. He wants an army of people who know how to pray. God desire, another one, God desires people who will pray in warfare. It is more than just prayer. It is a warring of God's purpose in the nation. It is a warring for God's house for the full intent of God for his people. Not five-minute prayers, but until we take hold of the horns of the altar. The kingdom of this world have one purpose, to prevent the rule of God in the earth. God wants to raise up a corporate Daniel to pray into these things. So you can see the, the fervency just coming through in his quotes. You can see the fervency and the determination that he's, he was calling us to on that, in that day, those six years ago. And I, and I think it really is important that we, when we pray, that there's, a, there's a fervency, there's a determination uh, that uh, is in, in incorporated into our uh, prayer uh, time as well. And so one more point, and then we'll, we'll pray to close the, the session and the class, is accompany the times of eternal purpose prayer with fasting as the Holy Spirit might lead. Uh, so use your wisdom on that. Uh, uh, you know, just a personal testimony, you know, I, I used to fast a lot. I used it long periods of time. The older I get, I found it to be a little bit harder to do the longer fast. But pray as the Holy Spirit leads because fasting does, when led by the Holy Spirit, does add a lot of uh, power and authority to our prayer time. So anyway, hopefully this will help you. I know I've kind of gone through it fairly quickly, but uh, you know, you've got the notes there. It's it really nothing real complicated. It's just, uh, just some simple tips here and there on how to do it. But it's very important that you do prepare before you start the session, before you start the group, and then um, do these things that we mentioned as you start the group in, in each session because they will be helpful uh, to do that. So anyway, let me close. I want to just thank you for uh, your attentiveness and your uh, being so faithful and part of the Forerunner School and also in this class. And I know it's an important topic, um, uh, and we want to just pray that each of us will, God will raise us up as forerunners who will be intercessors praying into God's eternal purpose. So let's pray. Uh, and we'll ask God to release an impartation uh, that we each one might become those prayer warriors who will take hold of the horns of the altar and pray with fervency into the eternal purposes of God. So, Father, Heavenly Father, that is our prayer. Actually, that is our prayer, Lord, that we ask that you would raise up this forerunner company that you have called us to, that forerunner school is, is intended to do, that you would raise us up around the world as a company of intercession, a company of forerunners, and part of which, part one ministry of which will be intercession, praying into God's eternal purpose. So we ask for that, Father, that you would, that you would wake us up to that call, that you would give us knowledge and insight of how to pray into those kinds of, of issues and topics with effectiveness, that you would raise up prayer groups, houses of prayer, prayer focuses around, around the world. We, we cry out for it to be the case in America and in Canada and in Europe and in India and Africa, around the world, Lord, that you would raise up a, a company of intercessors who would pray into these things. It is our desire. We pray that our life would be incense before the throne that our life would be the fire that would mix with the incense, 
that we would be priests according to the order of Melchizedek, kings and priests with authority and effectiveness, that we would pray these themes with, with determination and faithfulness, Lord. We cry out, God, for all of these things, Lord. We pray, Father, that you would put a, a, an impartation in our heart where we would not be able to be content, where there would be a restlessness in our heart until we are praying in accordance with your will, and your thought, and your purpose and intent in the order of, uh, of eternal purpose prayer. We cry out, God, for that. We pray for these things and that you would do a deep and an abiding work in our hearts and in our lives. We pray. Help us to be forerunners, but help us also to be intercessors who pray as forerunners into God's eternal purpose. Now bless each and every person who's persevered, who's studied, who's read, who's watched, who's listened. Bless them all, Lord, as they have sought first your kingdom and your righteousness. We ask that you would add all things unto them in the name of Jesus. Amen.